Marcus, uh, and what I want to talk about is thread modeling, mechanical uh, locking systems by analyzing puzzles. So what I want to talk is, this is a security awareness, uh, but a different, different type, because um, whenever there's security awareness, we see billboards like these. It says, uh, already this year, 19 burglaries, and please prevent burglaries. Uh, if you see something, call us, etc. But for me, that's <laughs> not really the point. Like, you can give a lot of advice, like uh, keep your lights on, or, um, or don't leave your, your ferro bus la laying around. Uh, but, but there's more to it. Uh, let's go into it. So first off, can we prevent burglaries? I would say no, uh, but we can make it a lot harder. Then there is a lot of arguments about uh, bricks and lions. Uh, the one is, uh, why should I buy good locks if someone can break uh, a window with a rock? That's totally fair. As for lions, uh, people always say, um, I don't need to outrun. Uh, I don't need to outrun a lion, I just need to outrun the, the persons with me. I, I think that's fair, but it's still not very nice. Um, so I'm going to try a different way. So first, uh, why puzzles? First, they are fun. Uh, I have a few here, I have a few at the lockpicking village. And examples are, um, there are plenty of them. Um, I, I have a small collection. I do a lot of uh, very hard um, Sudokus uh, with the guys from uh, Cracking, Cracking the Cryptic, where I solve those puzzles often. Uh, but the foremost reason is that nobody cares. <laughs> so whenever I talk about uh, security topics, then it's always uh, people have opinions about it. And when I talk about puzzles, then uh, nobody cares. That's very nice. So one thing about tool, uh, we, we, or we exist, there's the open organization uh, of lock pickers. It exists here in the Netherlands. Um, it exists in the United States, United Kingdom, and, and Australia. Here in the Netherlands, we have weekly lock picking sessions. And if you want to learn more about the topics I'm, I'm sharing here, uh, then please consider uh, visiting us at uh, our uh, lockpicking village. <laughs> it's just right next door uh, on this field. So let's go into thread modeling. Uh, this is a simplified version. Uh, it will just take a lot longer, uh, but it will get you started. So before we start, uh, start to thread model, uh, we want to find our, what, what is an asset, what's an attacker, what are vulnerabilities. Let's just be clear on the, on the definitions, or at least the definitions I will be using during this, uh, during this presentation. Because if we use different definitions, if I say threat and you mean you think on, on, a, on a vulnerability or a risk, then uh, we're thinking about different things, and it's going to be confusing. So for the asset, that's the thing of value. This is either uh, valuable to the defender or valuable to uh, the attacker, because if the asset is not valuable to the attacker, then of course your system will not be uh, touched. And this can be anything from, from information or money, but I've also seen on this camp uh, data being locked up. I've seen uh, toilet paper being locked up. Just whatever is your, whatever is your, your system. For the threat or for the attacker, I would define it as an entity that is skilled enough to gain access to the assets. 
the attacker needs a motivation, opportunity, and a method. And if it either uh, lacks one of them, uh, then you don't have uh, an attacker for your system. I define it as skilled enough, uh, because also if the attacker is not skilled enough, then again, for your system, you don't have uh, an attacker. It's not necessarily the intent, but the achieving of uh, for the vulnerability, uh, we define it as an unintentional flaw in a system that leads to a compromise of an asset. And these uh, vulnerabilities can be exploited uh, by, by an attacker. Okay, let's take a look at a few case studies. Here I have a, a box, box of wood. It works like a um, mechanical combination lock. Uh, so in this case, it has sliders, it's a puzzle. And if you uh, move the sliders past these notches, then the, the, the lock will, will open, the box will open. And for this, because it's a puzzle, um, it's intended to be uh, carefully handled. It's, it's, um, created to be, to, to not use uh, damage. However, for, for this model, um, I found that someone else was before me and they just ripped the, the pieces apart. That's a different, different model. And uh, what I found for, for this particular box, it has a congratulations message and it also uh, assumes that you didn't use a soul. Did brute forcing, did uh, damaging it fit the model? Um, I don't really know. The second one is uh, this puzzle. It's a, a deal o ring. It's a hidden maze puzzle. And there are uh, several type of, types of them. Uh, this started around the 1990s, and, and this should have be, become the, the best thing ever after Rubik's Cube, but it never became uh, that big. And the goal is to remove the, the ring from the, from the puzzle. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite a fun, uh, fun puzzle. This is the orange version. And as we see on the box, we have the, we have the instructions. And we also have uh, different levels. So there is the easy yellow up till the terrible black. Because I only had the orange one, I assumed the, um, the, the black one would be definitely be a lot harder. Uh, but a few people in the know uh, told me, now it's just all uh, psychological uh, warfare uh, to some extent. So that's, uh, so that's nice. But at the moment, I don't have access to, to any of the other ones. Uh, I can only find the yellow and the orange ones uh, for, for sale. So if anyone has the, the green, blue, red, and black, I'd like to be an attacker. I'd like to have the opportunity <laughs> to defeat them as well. So I mentioned for this puzzle uh, the intended solution or the intended way of, of manipulating them. But we can list the possible attacks. And here's just, just a very short list. I separated them to, to solving the maze in different ways, using brute force or just trying out all the combinations, uh, building a, a, a robot, uh, just like we, we manipulate uh, safes at some point. But we can also learn the maze some other way. Uh, maybe someone else already published this on the internet. Or I can just find someone that knows the answer. Or I can use more advanced techniques, like uh, getting an echo or an x-ray made. These seem quite far-fetched, like an x-ray. Why would you solve a puzzle like an x-ray? Well, that all depends on the, on the asset. <laughs> is the asset valuable enough for the attacker? Uh, and so I like to list them and then cross them off if they're not applicable 
to my uh, thread model. But we can also bypass uh, the safe uh, by just filing away the, the knob or just using a lot of force and just pulling the maze free. That's all something to, to consider. Uh, just for fun, I tried it uh, this way. Uh, so I taped a piece of, uh, piece of paper around uh, the cylinder, built a contraption, and uh, just solved the maze. And it drew out the maze uh, very nicely, and I solved the, the puzzle uh, in the end. So I did solve it a few times beforehand, but now I have the, the, the real maze as it is inside. So let's talk about uh, locks for now. Because puzzles are interesting, uh, locks are more interesting. For, for me, locks are puzzles. For tool, uh, locks are puzzles. And the question always arises, can any lock be picked? And is lock picking uh, realistic? I, I think it's an interesting question. And um, I think if you buy tens of a lock, if you take them apart, if you study the same lock for tens of hours, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, then put the lock back together very carefully and start manipulating it, it might be possible that you uh, open this one particular lock. But that's for me, because it's a puzzle, uh, that's for me the form of realism. That's not the same as if this lock was on a door uh, or uh, being used. For this, I use the, the uh, thread model of, uh, of a lock picker. And what it wants, it wants to uh, open the padlock, open the shackle, call it open. But more precise, it wants to rotate the, the cylinder without using, without using the key. And what the lock picker has, or at least in this model, um, the lock picker has lock picks and infinite time and infinite patience. So if this is a type of, of attacker you want to keep out, then maybe you need to uh, do other things. <laughs> you, you need to uh, consider this. Another thing the, the lock picker has is, um, is these rules, ethics. Uh, so only pick your own locks, and only pick locks that are uh, not in use. The, the CTF people, they have a nice, nice idea about, um, about this. They made a contraption of 3D printed plastic, and it has a slidey bit which has the CTF flag. So you can prove that you've picked it. Um, at that moment, the asset becomes uh, the CTF flag, but then the lock is in use, so are we allowed to pick it? <laughs> so for the lock, uh, we have here a basic Euro cylinder, uh, just no name, uh, no, no brand, uh, nothing special. And in here, there are a bunch of uh, pin stacks. Just to go over it quite, quite briefly, um, we can use a normal, we can use the key to set all the pins to the, to the red line. We call this a shear line, and this allows the lock to uh, rotate. But the wrong key will not allow, uh, the wrong key will not allow the lock uh, to rotate. We can also use uh, lock picks like these and go through the lock pin by pin, find the binding pin, get feedback this way, and open the lock. That, of course, takes um, a lot of practice and also a lot of uh, time. But it is a nice uh, challenge. What's even more of a challenge is when locks start having these uh, security pins. There are different shapes, different feedback, 
a different puzzle. There are a few, few more of them. For some lock pickers, <laughs> they think normal locks are boring, so they start creating their own. And we call them challenge locks. So here are a few pins. The first two from the left are, are normal pins, and the other ones are, uh, are created by lock pickers themselves. Uh, this, this one in particular is uh, from a, a community bu built lock. It has uh, 10, 10 pins and two sides. But what's very funny about this one is they, they glued <laughs> the two sides together. Uh, so you have to pick the front side and the back side all together to open the lock. So definitely, definitely a challenge. And then there are people uh, that create uh, unpickable locks, or at least they claim them to be uh, unpickable. Anypuck, that's a friend in the, in the UK, I created this particular lock. Um, he uses unpickable with an asterisk, like asterisk, like not picked yet. He has a patent on this particular design. From the front, it doesn't, doesn't look uh, too bad. But if you take the lock apart, we see that it consists of uh, quite clever mechanisms already. We have an inner core, we have the, um, the housing, and we have an outer core. And what he bases his uh, lock on, and what he bases his patent on, is a, a probability game. Like he used a lot of master wafers, um, as we see here. And all these small wafers create a lot of different shear lines for the first core. But the second core can only rotate if both of the shear lines are met with the one thicker, uh, thicker pin. So the probability of hitting the second shear line are much lower. And it also derives us from our usual, uh, usual feedback. So it is definitely a, um, a fun, uh, fun puzzle. The next one I have here, um, I bought at some point um, a, a few racks of uh, safety deposit boxes. Um, I use them to store my, my locks. And I removed all the, all, the, all the cylinders because I didn't really uh, didn't really care to lock them up. But these safe deposit boxes are uh, usually, um, you can usually rent them at, at a bank, where they are in a basement, in a vault, and you can rent just one locker. Um, it's, um, it's not that expensive, and it's insured to, to, to quite, quite a bit. I have one myself, and I use it to store, to, to store backups um, and, and a few documents that I, do, I don't want to lose. Uh, but each, each their own. Uh, it's insured to such a high value that it might... You could also put your valuables in there. But in particular, I want to talk about this lock. <laughs> this is the Rosencrantz safe deposit box lock. It's uh, quite, quite, an interesting, uh, quite an interesting lock, and it, it's quite an interesting lock. Um, the, um, it's a form of a disc detainer, but the discs are quite, quite big, and this is quite difficult to, uh, to manipulate. And they did so intentionally, they made uh, the key is hard to duplicate. They made the um, they made false notches in the um, in the discs, and that's all to to prevent someone from getting access to the assets without damaging uh, without damaging the lock.
So here we have the key interacting with the disks. So of this lock, we have uh, eight elements of uh, six different depths, different, uh, different shapes. And this is uh, more than a million different, uh, different combinations. You cannot get the blanks. Um, of course, uh, the most determined attacker will, can make these, make these. But the assumption is if we just have two keys, th these keys only belong to the owner or the renter of the, of the lock, of the box. Then, if the lock is intact, then um, then no one has accessed uh, accessed the the valuables. And I believe this is more of an uh, insurance uh, thing, but also, of course, uh, how you build your your threat model. But what I found surprising about this uh, this lock is, even though it has so many features to, uh, to make a lock picking hard, to make key duplication hard. It isn't drill resistant. The core is made of a very soft uh, metal. This isn't a flaw. This isn't a vulnerability, only if you don't know about it, because this is a design choice they made. They made their lock so that it's very hard to, hard to uh, manipulate, uh, but easy to, to destroy in case they, they need to destroy it. Let's now go from, from lock picking and um, the infinite patience to um, a simplified model of a, a, a burglar. What a burglar wants, access to the items that you have uh, locked up. And uh, some burglars might have fast entry tools and methods, uh, including bricks, including hammers, including hexels, uh, you name it. But it has very little uh, time, just, uh, just under two minutes. Again, when we have this same cylinder, there is a very known, very known uh, flaw in this in this cylinder, and that is, um, it's mounted with a with a screw hole, and this is also a uh, a pivot. So there's very little material there uh, to hold these hold the lock uh, together, and it is, this is such a common uh, common issue that the better brands locks, the, the better certified locks will have hardened bridges or anti-snap features. So this is a lock uh, from the UK where it has at both sides uh, anti-snap features or pro-snap features because they will snap before the cylinder snaps in two. I, I like this design, and it works uh, work quite well, because then at least you need two attack methods uh, to, to gain entry uh, to open this lock. Even more pronounced are our locks like these, also from the UK, where it has uh, two snap features at uh, both sides of the lock, so both internal as external. That's uh, not, too, not too common. And also, when you snap the second feature, it has a, a relocker. So uh, you can never open it from the outside if the part has been snapped, or so, the, so is the idea. And then the middle bit is a, uh, is a hardened bridge. It's a very tough me metal, and it's very difficult to, to get into this. And the, all these features are required by, uh, by the standards. They have the, the, the British, British standard um, up to three star, and they also have the, the solid secure, uh, and this one is rated solid secure diamond grade. That's the highest of the high. And circled here in orange 
it also protects some protection against um, against non-destructive attempts, and these are uh, trap pins. So if you pick the lock uh, and it rotates 20 or 30 degrees, these trap pins will fall into the lock, and it is very difficult to, to get out of them. It's certainly not impossible, uh, but I've uh, been practicing with one of these locks, and it took me better part of, of a week to, to get past these, uh, these trap pins. <laughs> so in all normal circumstances where you say your burglar only has uh, two minutes, this will be plenty. Let's now go for some uh, other security advice. Again, you cannot prevent burglaries, but you can make it a lot harder to, to get in. Your tread model is not my tread model, and I saw this, uh, this picture with uh, an elephant uh, in your kitchen. Um, I don't know how to protect against elephants, uh, but it would be quite a beefy lock uh, to do that. What you should do is consider the whole system and then protect your, your assets uh, accordingly. One of the advice we usually give is uh, key control. So who has your keys? This particular picture is one I put, put on Twitter a very long time ago, and also on the tag you could, can read that it's from, from a CTF. So if someone fancies, uh, please make me a key, find me uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere later, and then we will test it. I don't have the locks with me at, on site, uh, but we'll arrange uh, something. So if we have a picture, uh, then a determined attacker uh, with enough skill, enough knowledge, uh, can duplicate a key. This is what we call usually key control, and um, lock manufacturers know this for a very long time. And usually you're not able to find the blank keys to make, uh, to make a duplicate key without the authorization of the manufacturer. Um, and here I have a, um, on, on the background, this is a 3D printed key. Um, it uh, was quite a nice, nice challenge. It took me like hundreds of attempts before I got the FDM printer to, to work uh, correctly to print these um, almost uh, tens of micrometer steps, uh, but with, with an F, not FDM, as less printer, um, it was uh, for first, first attempt, it worked uh, flawlessly. So again, uh, consider these things in your, uh, in your thread model. Also consider uh, ex ex existing uh, security schemes. Uh, there are plenty, plenty of them. Just find the, the relevant ones uh, for your uh, for your country. Uh, one you should check is the uh, what your insurance wants, <laughs> um, and then you can go uh, much higher from there. Uh, one most common here in the Netherlands is SKG, um, and then three st three stars will give you. Uh, five minutes with a selection of, of tools. Uh, the lock on the background is an MNC. That's a quite affordable uh, lock. Uh, maybe not this particular one. This is their latest model. Uh, that's um, the MNC Move. It has a movable element in the tip of the key, and it has some other, um, other interesting features that make it very difficult to duplicate this key um, without the authorization from them.
So to recap uh, this presentation, uh, for your system, you want to find your assets. So think of what is valuable. Uh, what are the things that you want to, to protect? Is it, uh, is it your data? Is it uh, money? Uh, this can also be uh, the, um, your, your feeling of safety. Uh, that's, a difficult, uh, that's a difficult asset to, to protect. But it's definitely, definitely uh, an asset. Then you want to define your, uh, your attacker. So is it someone, um, is it an entity that has all the, all the time in the world, all the resources in the world, then it's going to be very difficult uh, to protect your assets. But if it's uh, my simplified uh, model of, of a burglar, then um, that might be already a lot easier to uh, protect against. Then you want to find uh, vulnerabilities uh, in your system. So either just uh, start listing all the ways to attack your system, all the ways to get to your assets uh, through uh, an attack tree. But you can also just ask for, for help. And for uh, nonprofits, uh, tool will definitely uh, is definitely able to to help, uh, but we don't do uh, so, uh, we don't do consultancy and uh, no no paid gigs in that in that sense. And lastly, you want to implement enough defenses so you get your make it impossible. Uh, for this one attacker to get, get access uh, to your assets, or at least to delay them enough, et cetera, et cetera. Wrapping up, uh, there are two books uh, you should consider. Uh, the threat modeling book is, uh, is very nice, and also we have a book about Locksport coming in the very near future, and that's written by uh, Jos Weyers and Walter Belgers and a few other uh, Locksport friends. I do have time for, for questions uh, now, uh, but if this is any interest to you, uh, please come and see us uh, at the lockpicking village uh, that's uh, next door. Thank you. So there is actually some time for questions. If you have any questions, please line up at the microphones in the middle of the room. And while you do so, I already have a question. Do you have any special locks you use at home or are they just normal ones? Uh, they are definitely just commercial locks, but they are com of a special of a special type. Um, for me, it's most important that uh, there, if someone ever would get in, there is damage. Uh, I would definitely hate that I'm uh, is someone in my house or am I losing my mind? <laughs> so I'd rather have them break my door than uh, pick my locks. Okay. So, are there any questions from the audience? Don't be shy, he is still here. No? Then, just thank you very much for the talk. And if someone has a question afterwards, you can always find him and ask that. Give a round of applause. <laughs> you have a question, okay. Need a few seconds to come up with a question, of course. <laughs> that unpickable lock. Yes. If it were to be a commercial lock, how much do you think it would cost? Um, he has a, he has a patent, uh, but just just looking at what other people are selling, uh, then would be 150 pounds, something like there. Uh, but he is not commercially making them yet. Um, he is just testing the waters with his uh, patent, and hopefully, uh, 
Yeah, it's just an inventor, and inventors like to invent things, but they, they don't have the capability to mass produce uh, locks. So if anyone, if anyone is interested, uh, please uh, find Andy. Okay, then again, applause, please.